Hey, hey, everyone. Thanks for joining me, and welcome to the second round of five random Atari 2600 games. As with the previous episode, I'll be working my way through the next set of a randomly mixed collection of both licensed and unlicensed 2600 titles. Starting us off is Phoenix, one of many classic arcade ports that were made for the 2600. As expected, it is a very chopped down port due to the limitations of the system, but nevertheless, it is a good and very challenging game. In the same style as Galaxian, you control the horizontal movement of your ship while shooting down a fleet of angry birds. These alien birds also have guns, and they like to get close before dropping their birdie bullets on your nice clean windshield. Fear not though, you do have a temporary shield that you can put up to defend yourself for a short time. The only downside is that you can't move while it's active. After a few waves, you get introduced to the mothership. If you've played Yars Revenge, then you'll be all too familiar with how to defeat this enemy. First, you have to drill through the bottom layer of the ship, and then you have to chip away at the rotating shield in order to get a clean shot at the pilot. And of course, clearing that boss takes you through more of the same, only with increasing levels of difficulty. Definitely not a bad time if you like a good space shooter. Coco Nuts is certainly a nutty one. That zany monkey Coco is at it again, hurling coconuts at the helpless explorer Stanley. Dodging these deadly fruits is fairly easy in the beginning, but as time progresses, Coco becomes more and more enraged, and begins hurling coconuts with increasing intensity. Fortunately, Stanley is equipped with an umbrella, because rainforest. I don't know. Either way, if you get hit, you lose your umbrella shield. Hit again, there goes your helmet. And one more hit means lights out. Coco kills again. This game is stupid. Next up we have Tron Deadly Discs. Wow, can you imagine being a living computer program and having to live in an Atari 2600? Hey Larry, how's it going? I'm not Larry, I'm Mike, you idiot. How the hell was I supposed to know? We all just look like the same colored blocks. And that's apparently the comment that got Tron thrown into the arena of death. This game plays a bit like Robotron and Berserk. You're basically tossing and dodging discs against warrior programs to score up. As time passes, more enemies appear, and you can sometimes hop through the portals on the edges of the arena and reappear on the other side for a sneak attack. Just remember that your discs can only do damage if it's being thrown away from you, because it's harmless to enemies on its way back. Although, if you miss, you can just hit the fire button again and immediately recall the disc to fly back to you. Not a bad game overall. Mangia! Which is, of course, the Italian saying for eat up. But that's not necessarily the goal of this game. If anything, it's a warning about the dangers of childhood obesity. This kid is being served meal after meal by a mother who has clearly gone insane. She just can't stop cooking and preparing more and more plates. If these dishes pile up too high, the table breaks and game over. If you eat too much, you'll literally explode. I think the developer took the lyrics of Bohemian Rhapsody a bit too literally. Mamma mia, let me go, I don't wanna die and I'm pretty sure there is a space in hell dedicated to this exact nightmare scenario. To avoid death at the hands of Psycho Mom, you have to sneak food to the floor or window so that the dog and cat can snatch it away. Fortunately, these pets can pack it down. Just make sure that Mom doesn't catch you because she'll start dishing out even more. This has got to be one of the first games to earn the title of Survival Horror. And where's Papa in all of this? Hacked up in the cellar and served on a plate is my best guess. Now that's a spicy meatball! Ugh. Speaking of early survival horror games, finally we have Malagia. Malagia? Malagia? This game takes place on an alien space station where you and your crew are being held captive. I'm gonna be honest, my first play of this confused the hell out of me. It plays a lot like Pac-Man where you have to navigate the maze and grab a key from one of the three aliens so that you can access the next airlock to reach your ship. Just remember that if you're wandering around too long, or if you bump into the wrong Malagai, they'll try to capture you unless you're able to make it to the safe room on time. They can be pretty quick, too. About every time I attempted to escape, I found myself getting locked into a corner or turning at just the wrong moment. My playthrough here is definitely a bit of a mess, but now that I've actually read the instructions, <coughs> I can see how this could be more fun to play. If you missed the first episode, go ahead and click right here. And as always, be sure to hit that subscribe button if you want to see more random fun down the road. That's it for this session. I hope you all enjoyed. Until next time, I'll catch you on the flip side.